Well, welcome everybody. We're so glad to have you. Good morning. We are um, excited to present to you a virtual STEM field trip today. And this is presented to you by the D. Howard Foundation and IDRA, the Intercultural Development Research Association. We're excited to partner to provide you a field trip. I know that it's more fun maybe in person, but we think that we can have just as much fun online and make this virtual for you so that you get to meet uh, not only incredible STEM professionals from the field here in San Antonio and Texas, uh, but also give you a little glimpse into some potential STEM career pathways. We're hoping to share with you some incredible opportunities in STEM and we're very, very passionate about showing you specifically different opportunities in the aviation, aerospace, aeronautical career fields, and let you meet people who are in these fields, who are experts in these fields, and to give you just a, gl a glimpse of their STEM journeys so that you can learn about how to enter this kind of career uh, pathway and what you can do now as a middle schooler uh, to get yourself on track for these careers and college degrees as well. So again, extremely excited. We're going to do a quick roll call. I'm going to pass it over uh, to, to Mrs. Christina Martinez, Executive Director of the D. Howard Foundation. If you want to say hi to everybody. Hello and good morning, Chief Science Officers. I am so excited to see all of you this morning. I am Christina Martinez. I'm a proud resident of San Antonio. I've lived here my whole life, graduated from UTSA. And now my job at the D. Howard Foundation is to make sure young people like you are connected with um, individuals like, the, like Olga, who you're going to meet in just a little bit. But our job is to make sure that young people all across San Antonio know about the world of aviation and aerospace. Not sure if you know this, but San Antonio is has a robust uh, environment of aviation and aerospace companies, industries. And so we wanna make sure that young people know about those opportunities, know about the jobs that lie in those industries. And so at the D. Howard Foundation, we're all about connecting the dots between young people like you and jobs in aviation and aerospace. So I'm happy to be with you here this morning and thank you to um, our partners at the school, Ms. Hernandez, thank you so much for setting this up. And of course, to Dr. Garcia for running the Chief Science Officer Program. And you are in for a treat with our speaker today. Thank you. Thank you so much. So very excited uh, to share this space with these incredible people on the Zoom call, as well as all of our students that are joining us. Uh, I'm Dr. Stephanie Garcia, the Education Associate at IDRA. I also lead the Texas Chief Science Officers Program, which is a 6th through 12th grade STEM ambassador program across Texas, and it's in network with the International Chief Science Officers Program. So it's very exciting to be able to amplify student voice and support students in STEM conversations in our community and have them lead the conversation, which is what they'll have a chance to do today after our field trip. I'd also like to quickly introduce our STEM professional for this virtual STEM field trip, Mrs. Olga Custodio. Uh, as you can see here, retired uh, from the military as well as captain of uh, American Airlines. She served as a captain in American Airlines and uh, she serves currently as the executive director and treasurer uh, of the Women in Aviation Alamo City chapter. And she's gonna have so much to share with you. You wanna briefly say hi to everybody? Good morning, everybody. So glad to be here. Can't wait to share and um, visit with all the uh, science officers. And thank you for the invite. And I'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Wonderful. Okay, everybody. So um, I can't uh, neglect, of course, introducing some people that in the Zoom room that you probably know very well or have seen them around campus. We've got uh, Mrs. Hernandez, uh, the ACE Club uh, Learning Tree uh, uh, in, in Texas CSO advisor at your campus. So she, if you're interested in the program and joining the Chief Science Officer Program, you wanna go to our fabulous advisor, Mrs. Hernandez. You wanna briefly say hello this morning? Yes, I'm super excited. I'm so excited. Thank you so much <laughs> for coming. Thank you for participating. And uh, I am a lifelong, 
educator and learner. I'm learning every day. I learn from the kids. And my passion is in leadership and empowering students. And with the CSO program, that's exactly what we do. And I love it. Um, so I um, am here to serve. And if anyone is interested in that STEM classroom, please see me. I run the yes. ACE program and my office is upstairs. See, uh, what is it? What's my office number? 120. <laughs> <laughs> Thank awesome. You. Thank you. And last but not least, we have our Texas Chief Science Officers from your school, CSS Damien and Emily. If you want to briefly say hello to your peers and to the professionals on the call. Yes. Hi, my name is Emily Gomez, and this is my second year being a CSO at Anson Jones Middle School. Great job, Emily. What about you, Damien? Hello, my name is Damien. This is my third year here as a CSO at Anson Jones Middle School. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm excited to have the uh, Chief Science Officers lead a STEM interview um, of our, our professional on the call today. And uh, we've got a couple friends as well. Uh, Wayne Fagan from uh, chairman of the D. Howard Foundation. Good morning, Sarah, as well as Learning Tree Advocate from Northside ISD. Um, this is Laura Barretta. Welcome to the uh, field trip as well. Okay, we're gonna get started because I know the bell's gonna ring, right? So we have a timed uh, agenda here. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into our field trip. Um, and so this is a walk through, a tour, if you will, of Stinson Airport here in San Antonio, Texas. And our STEM professional um, aviation trailblazer, Olga Castudio, will be uh, sharing um, wonderful information about uh, the history of aviation here in San Antonio and all the connections to this one airport that um, I've never been to. So I learned a lot from this video and I hope you will too. I'm going to push play and then I'm gonna pause it to make sure you can actually hear <laughs> the audio. So I wanna make sure it actually works. So bear with me for a second. Welcome to Stinson Airport. My name is Olga Custodio and I'm a retired Lieutenant Colonel from the US Air Force Reserve and also a retired American Airlines captain. My pleasure to be here and talk about what Stinson Airport is all about. So let me tell you the little bit of history about Stinson Airport. It is the second oldest operating airport in the US. So it's been here over a hundred years and there is so much about this place that you will love to learn about. Stinson Airport was started by the Stinson family. It was Eddie, Marjorie, and Catherine Stinson. And they established a flight school here in 1915. They were the first flight school located here at, at the airport. And they just had a couple of airplanes and some buildings uh, around where they taught civilian flying. Um, in 1930, um, that flight school shut down. The U.S. Air Force took over and they made this a military flying school. And from that point after World War II, this became the commercial airline airport for San Antonio. Well, let me start by telling you a little bit about the structure of this building. It's an Art Deco style, and this was um, put up here initially as the air terminal. About uh, 12 years ago, they decided to expand the airport, and now we have these two beautiful wings to each side where we have a flight school, an FBO. This airport celebrated 100 years in 2015, so we're well into that, and we're hoping maybe for another 100 years. We'll see. So come with me inside, and I'll show you what they have. Airplane or get on the airplane, you really have to be safe. So, 
So you have to really make sure that you look all around, that there aren't any aircraft coming. So what we see right now is this uh, gas truck. Usually when you're in a car, you come up and you drive to the gas station. Well, out here, the gas station drives to you. Well, come up, fill up your airplane, and make sure it's ready to go. So these two airplanes, here are actually airplanes that are from other airports, other cities that fly into San Antonio to either come for a business trip or a fun weekend or just visit family. And this FBO, which is a fixed base operator, will take care of your airplane. They'll park you, they'll tie it down, and they'll give you gas. So when you come visit Stinson, I recommend that you come outside the terminal to the ramp area. There's the yellow line I mentioned before and make sure you stand behind that. But you wonder how airplanes get here. Well, in the distance, you can see the, the traffic control tower. Up there are air traffic controllers, which is another aviation career. Um, and they control all the airplanes in the airspace that we have around Stinson Airport. They also control airspace just outside Stinson Airport. And so they will be giving you vectors or directing you on how to come and land at the airport. Right now, we have an aircraft that is landing. A lot of these uh, airplanes that we have here um, are students learning how to fly. And we'll talk about the flight school here in a few minutes. But the air traffic controllers basically tell pilots where to go so even though we control the airplanes air traffic control controls us this part of the airport is really near and dear to my heart this is a memorial established to the stinson family eddie Marjorie and Jack. Um, this memorial was established by the Order of Dedalians. Even though I represent today Women in Aviation, Alamo City Chapter, I, I really want to talk about this legacy. We stand as pilots on the shoulders of these uh, four pilots and the family who actually established flying here in San Antonio. There's a legacy. These are pioneers. Um, they established the school and I as a female pilot stand on the shoulders of the women air service pilots that actually were the first ones to fly during the war. And so legacies and pioneers are so important because for our future we have to stand on someone's shoulders. Somebody started it first. Somebody was always the first at some point in some career so we can continue the profession that you want as you continue through life it depends whatever you want to do make sure you study the history of that profession and I stand here at this memorial in honor of those pioneers that established the flight school here um, but the Order of Dedalian is a military organization that promotes aviation for every branch of the military and I am honored to be also a member of that organization. So welcome to the lobby of the air terminal here at Stinson Airport. All around you can see pictures of what Stinson looked like, Eddie, Marjorie, Catherine Stinson, and at what time I told you about it was a commercial airport. So there's a picture of one of the agents that would greet the passengers that would come through. So when you visit here, I strongly recommend that you walk and read every picture in here because there's so much history and legacy that is left at this airport and what was established here. One of my favorite walls of pictures here at Stinson is this one. It really depicts Catherine Stinson. I, I want to say she was the instructor of the Stinson family that really brought it to the forefront and put women's flying in the forefront also. Her legacy is incredible 
And when you come, I recommend you read a little bit about her history. So, one thing that you might find curious about Katherine Stinson, she also loved music. And her entry into flying was because she wanted to take music lessons. So she started flying to earn money to pay for her music lessons. But, so speaking of different aviation careers and professions, here we have tenants at an airport. And one of the tenants that we find here are the Alamo helicopter tours. So they're not only fixed wing pilots that live here, but also helicopter pilots. And this establishment here, this tenant at the airport actually gives tours. So if you're interested in getting a tour of downtown San Antonio, the hill country, this group actually does that for you. So I want to share that you don't have to be in an airplane or be a pilot or air traffic controller that we talked about previously. You can be in administration. So if you don't like flying but still love aviation and aerospace, this is one of the careers that you can kind of look into and see if this is something you might be interested in. So here on the second floor is our other tenant. This is Sky Safety. This is a flight school. So if you're interested in flying or kind of curious about it, they offer a discovery flight. So you can come up and pay a fee and get a flight to kind of get a feel for if that's something you want to do. They also have flight training to get your basic pilot's license, but all the way up to multi-engine. So if you want a career in aviation as a commercial airline pilot, this is where you would start. And the flight instructors here are fantastic. This uh, spring, I took my flight review to get my license up to date, and they're a spectacular and amazing crew, and they will take great care of you and also make it so much fun to start flying. So let me introduce myself again. I want to let you know that I am the executive director and treasurer of the Women in Aviation Alamo City chapter. And one of my favorite times spending here at Stinson is when we host Girls in Aviation. These halls are full of girls from eight years old to 17 years old and we teach them a whole day of aviation and aerospace. We talk about navigation. We have hands-on, they working with mechanics, aviation mechanics tools on how to build a wing, on how to do a rivet. Um, we teach them uh, a little bit about flying. We get them in the simulator. So there's a flight simulator here that Sky Safety supports us with. And we let girls get in there and see what it's actually like to fly without actually taking them up in the air. And they spend a whole day and not only that, but they have friendships that come out of this day. So we expose them to so much. We also, and one thing I forgot to mention, is bring the firefighters here. Firefighters for aviation are here established on the field in case there's a fire or a crash. They're able to respond immediately. We also have EMS that comes out just in case. So we call that the crash crew, if you will, for aviation. But the other thing the girls have had the opportunity to do is visit the tower. They actually get to go up to the tower, talk to the air traffic controllers, see the airfield from a different perspective, and watch the airplanes take off and land. So they hear communications and the navigation of how the air traffic controllers control those airplanes here. But that's where it would start for you. If you're curious about aviation, I highly recommend that you look up Women in Aviation Alamo City Chapter. We offer Girls in Aviation Day. We also have an app, but I'll talk about that a little bit later, um, of where you can experiment and look into these different careers at home. So let's talk about the hangars and the space outside that we're gonna look at where they keep it's like a garage for aircraft. So let's go take a look. So we're outside again on the ramp. Just off the ramp are these hangars. These hangars are what house the airplanes. They keep them safe from bad weather, rain, any kind of um, wind, high wind that may occur. 
and um, it, it saves the airplane. It's kind of like parking your car in the garage. That is very important to keep an aircraft in great condition. So what happens is we have here a couple of airplanes established in this hangar. Some hangars are just for one aircraft. Here we can get several in. So down the stream here, uh, down the line, you can see there are several hangars on this side. On the other side, there's several more. They're always building hangars because the hangar space is limited, so limited. There's airplanes that have to sit outside and then just take a hard beating with the weather. So these hangars are really important to keep the airplanes safe, secure, and in great condition. Well, here's a fun fact for you. In July, I went up to Oshkosh. And at Oshkosh, there's over 50,000 airplanes that fly in for a whole week. It's amazing. But there aren't many places where people can stay. So what pilots do is they get a parking spot, they pop their tent, and they sleep under their wing. And they have everything from cooking hot dogs on a little grill to going down to the market and buying their grub. So you can actually go anywhere, you know, up in the bush, in the, in, the, in the jungle, in the forest, where you find an airstrip and fly your plane in there and just pop a tent and spend the night. So for the past seven years, we've held Girls in Aviation Day here at Stinson. This year is going to be virtual and you are invited. You can look up the registration form on our website, which we will share with you. And I hope to see you there. Great. Thank you so much for this. We've got uh, one more quick one to uh, hold on one second. Welcome to Stinson Airport. Let me try to escape and get out of this. Here we go. We've got one more quick one and then we'll jump into our interview. Stinson celebrated a hundred years. So we just want to highlight this real quick. Over the last century, from its site near San Antonio missions, Stinson has witnessed the history of aviation from barnstormers to jets, from military outposts to today's city on the rise, and the history of San Antonio. Started by a pioneering aviation family, the airport began as the Stinson School of Flying, a legacy revealed in its unique airport code, SSF. While Eddie Stinson went on to establish the successful Stinson Aircraft Company, sisters Marjorie and Catherine taught and inspired the first generation of pilots. Young Catherine Stenson, who was born on February 14, 1891, garnered worldwide celebrity for her record-setting exhibition flights, becoming the first woman to perform maneuvers like the loop-de-loop -loop stunt. Known as the Flying Schoolgirl, Catherine toured the globe as a famous barnstormer before becoming the first female pilot to fly U.S. Air Mail and volunteering as a Red Cross ambulance driver in Europe during World War I. After retiring her wings, Catherine went on to start a family and launch another long and productive career in Santa Fe. In her second career, Catherine excelled as an influential architect whose work helped shape the modern Santa Fe style. That's fantastic. It's so wonderful to learn this great history here um, here in our own backyard. And thank you again, Mrs. Olga Studio, for leading us through that tour and explaining this rich history. And we'd love to hear more about you now. So uh, I'll have you kind of quickly introduce your, your pictures here, your slides, and then we're gonna uh, jump head into uh, our uh, interview led by our chief science officers. Absolutely, thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to let the, the science officers kind of do the interview, but I really want to just uh, share a little bit about who I am and how I came into aviation. Um, first of all, I thoroughly enjoyed sharing uh, Stinson Airport with you. That was a great highlight for me, and I hope you enjoyed that video. But my uh, aviation career started in the military, actually. I graduated high school at 16. And it took me 10 years to get into the military. Um, but I was uh, 
patient and persistent until I found the opportunity and the Air Force offered that for me. I was one of the first female, um, Latina, actually the first Latina pilot for the US Air Force, but the, one of the first pioneer uh, Air Force uh, female pilots also. Um, as you can see, um, that was my aircraft. I was a T-38 instructor. I got my fighter qualification, although women weren't allowed to fly fighters at the time, but that was the fastest jet I could, I could get. Um, it flies supersonic, it has an ejection seat, and it was the best flying ever. Um, from there, I transitioned to commercial airlines. And as, as you can see, a picture of myself uh, as a captain after I joined American Airlines. And I flew around the world. I mean, I, I had uh, flying uh, trips that took me all around the US, Canada, Mexico, Central America, the Caribbean, South America, and Europe. So, so it was just a wonderful experience for me. Um, could I get the next slide, please? Thank you. There you go. As you can see, this is my T-38 and we fly in formation and those aircraft fly, actually, if you put wingtip to wingtip, they're three feet apart, but we're offset at, at a 45 degree angle from each aircraft up to four aircraft fly together. Um, at, at, at American Airlines, my last aircraft I flew was a Boeing 767. And um, that's the one that I really uh, enjoyed the most because I flew out of Miami International Airport and flew down to South America and Europe in that. We uh, had a, a crew and passenger over 300 in, in that airplane. So that was, was fantastic. But um, next slide, please. So what I do now, I'm retired from the military and from a commercial. I am a huge STEM advocate and it's great to be here with the science officers today. Um, and I'm also an aviation mentor. I want to say that I am also part of the D. Howard Foundation, which is an amazing foundation that supports STEM and aviation in San Antonio. Um, and it's, it's just great. They've always supported the Women in Aviation Alamo City, and I, we're very grateful for that partnership. Um, as you can see, um, as a mentor, uh, this was up at Oshkosh, that little girl. I met her about four years ago, and it seems like every time I go up to Oshkosh, we kind of connect again, and she wants to be a pilot for United Airlines. I also fly uh, general aviation. I'm getting back into that. That's why I had my flight review. And here I am with a friend who actually let me uh, uh, fly with her the uh, Vision Jet, which is an awesome airplane and uh, also part of Latinas in Aviation. It's, it's something that uh, we, we kind of got together. Uh, so many other professions in aviation and Latinas are in there. And, and we're going to get together in October, uh, October 2nd at College Park uh, Museum, which is next to College Park Airport, which is the first oldest um, airport in the US. Stinson is second, but College Park is first. And that's something you may want to look up and look into. But some of the authors of this book um, are getting together and we're going to have a, a full day of Latinas in aviation. Next slide, please. And I want to remind you that you save the date, Girls in Aviation Day. It's October 30th. We, normally, they pick a date for international, which is September 25th, but our chapter is going to hold it on October 30th. It will be virtual. You can look up on our website and our Facebook page that you see at the bottom there and get information. And as soon as we open registration, just keep checking back to make sure that you're included. So I hope to see you guys there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we will be sure to share the registration links uh, with our chief science officers, with our partnered class, and the entire campus there at Anson Jones to really promote this event. Um, lastly, but uh, really excited about this, we have our chief science officers, Damian and Emily, who have prepared a couple interview questions to ask um, for our STEM professional here. And I'll stop sharing just so that we can kind of see everybody in the room. And uh, we'll go ahead and pass it along. How about CSO Emily? Would you like to start us off by asking an interview question for our STEM professional today? Yes. 
Thank you, Dr. G, and thank you, Ms. Custodia. The first question is, what's the most challenging part of your job? Well, uh, when I was flying, I think the most challenging part is to make sure that I uh, was always safe, no matter what I did uh, around the airplane. Safety is the number one thing for uh, aviation. It doesn't matter what your job is. Me as a pilot, obviously, to uh, make sure the aircraft is um, in good condition, that it's ready to fly, it's airworthy. Uh, if there's anything wrong with it, then we call a mechanic, have them fix it before we, we, we go up in the air. And it doesn't matter if it's military or commercial, it's the same across the board for aviation. So just making sure everything's safe, we're airworthy and, and ready to go up and fly and, and taking care of the passengers too, so. What That's experiences best prepared you for your job? I'm sorry? What experiences best prepared you for your job? What experiences? Wow. I think everything in life is an experience and it prepares you in some way, you know, um, interacting with people, what you study. Uh, I love math. Math was my thing um, in, in college. I uh, unfortunately didn't major in math because I had to change my degree in order to continue. But I did get a minor in math, and I think that helped me a lot as far uh, uh, as challenging aviation. Um, the other thing that helped, believe it or not, is um, I studied the piano for about five years. So music, that technically helped me because it's a matter of reading what's on the page, interpreting it, and actually applying it. So. That thought process is what really helped me, you know, in the technical side. And then the math, obviously, is what helped also. Next question. How important and relevant was math in your career? Oh, well, I just talked about math. And, and the thing is that when you're flying, um, now the avionics or the computers in the aircraft are so advanced and, and it's just a matter of knowing what to punch in. But before we had to calculate in our head. So every time we come in for a landing, the uh, airspeed for approach depended on how much we weighed and you had to calculate the weight of the aircraft, the fuel, and then recalculate how fast or how slow you, that you would come in for the approach. So, you know, you had to do math equations really fast in your head. If you were coming down to make a descent from one altitude to the other, and you were requested, and, uh, and you had to make a, a certain altitude at a certain time, so now you had to calculate the feet per minute that you had to come down, what kind of angle you were using. So those are the things that really uh, was important as far as knowing math and, and, and calculating that really quick and applying it to the aircraft. Did you participate in an internship? If so, how was it beneficial? No, I never had the opportunity to do that. And now there are so many internships and I, I strongly recommend that you, you look for them because they're out there and they're the best thing possible. What I know is that normally when you do an internship, you know, depending on where you, what phase of, of college you are in, um, you may end up getting a job with that same company you get your internship, which is really cool, you know? So I recommend that. Thank you so much, Ms. Custodia. Now that we're done with the interview, we have a few minutes for some questions and answers. Does anyone in the classroom have any questions for Ms. Custodia? Yes. No questions at this time. Okay, I have a question for the class. So how many of you like science, technology, engineering, or math? Fantastic, I love it, I love it. I love that enthusiasm. Now my second question is, how many of you are interested in aviation? 
okay, no takers, that's okay. <laughs> you don't know what you don't know, but I encourage you to go out to Stinson, visit that uh, airport. It's a great airport, it's very accessible. It's not like the international where you have to go through security and everything. So it's, it's very much out there. There's also um, an aviation museum just down the road that I recommend that you visit. But um, try and learn more about what's here in the city. And Stinson is, I think, a great place to start as Ms. far as Victoria, aviation. Yeah. I think that we are planting seeds every moment and exposure is everything. Yes. So after you, ex listening to you, I think that you're going to open the minds and open the door to possibilities. So it would be interesting if we ask that question maybe in a week or so after okay. they had time to think and after they're like, ah, I never thought about flying, but now they've been exposed to that. So thank you for planting seeds. No, all the time. And I love doing that. You know, I, I, I surely hope that they, they think about it, like you said, and, and consider it something different. So, um, but yes. Thank you again to everybody on the call today. Thank you to our partner class. We appreciate your time. I know the bell's gonna ring in a couple minutes, so I'll wrap this up for us. Again, thank you to all of our partners at D. Howard Foundation uh, for Northside ISD for uh, partnering with us with this field trip. Anson Jones Middle School specifically, our fabulous chief science officers who are going to make an incredible difference this school year and uh, our, our STEM professional. You're incredible. We thank you for uh, the difference you've made in this pathway and for paving the way for future gener generations in aviation. So thank you again for all your work. Ms. Custodio, we thank you. Thank all right, you. guys, we appreciate you. Take care. This will be uh, live on YouTube. We'll share the link later and we'll, we'll share the registration link for Girls in Aviation Day. Thank and you. thank you, Dr. G, for bringing the opportunities. Thank you. Have a good day. Absolutely. Bye. Thank you. We'll see our CSOs next week at our Leadership Training Institute. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Take care.